good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight uh, on Facebook Live or possibly a YouTube channel here at Cool Springs. And we're so excited tonight to have uh, Brian Stevens uh, with us tonight with the wonderful mission sending agency Global Gates that we have been partnering with him and his family and uh, Global Gates uh, for uh, we're just talking about, I think we think about seven years, Brian, and <laughs> yeah, and so moved, uh, uh, moved to, to New York City where we first met them through uh, Coach for the City back in, uh, we think the winter of 2013 is when we think about, about that, but we've been uh, at Cool Springs, thankfully, been able to, been blessed to, to know them and to work with them, sending mission teams about every year to work with them and also able to support them financially, and we're so thankful that he is willing to join us uh, tonight and uh, uh, really just kind of give us an update of what uh, God is doing there in the city that they live in now, Cincinnati. And so, Brian, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. I'm really glad everything going well in Cincinnati. You, you and the family doing well? Doing good. Uh, brave in the winter. Have some frigid temps up here right now. Uh, but uh, doing good and uh, staying healthy uh, in the midst of pandemic and winter and everything. We're, we're hanging in there. That's, that's great, and uh, I know your kids are enjoying playing in the snow up there. Hopefully, we're going to, we might get a little bit, uh, uh, hopefully by the end of February, we might get a little bit of snow to, uh, to see, but uh, but I wanted to, really just wanted us to, to talk for a few minutes uh, tonight about uh, what God's doing there in your life and in, in the life of your family and life of uh, in ministry there in Cincinnati, and um, and just to, uh, toward the end, get you to share a few prayer needs with us and, and all. But, but maybe, maybe for those that are watching that, that aren't familiar with Global Gates, and maybe they're new to Cool Springs, aren't familiar with, with you and your family and what you, what you do and how you ended up there and, and what your role looks like with Global Gates, share with us a little bit about that. Yeah, so Global Gates is uh, you know, a fairly young organization. I mean, it was... Uh, Founded, I joined in, in 2013. It was founded just a few years before then. Uh, started in New York City, uh, so that's where things started. It was just a few uh, missionary families serving there, and among unreached peoples, among West Africans, Arabs, Southeast Asians that were in New York, and and really the Global Gates was birthed out of this um, realization that some of the hardest to access, hardest to reach people around the world were, were moving uh, to America's cities. Uh, at that point, the, the, the thoughts were focused on New York as that's where our folks were at the time. Um, but starting to see that these same people were, were in New York City uh, uh, by the, the thousands. And so you had unreached immigrant groups from Mali that are very difficult to reach for various reasons. And yet they were represented in Harlem, uh, in Manhattan, uh, by the thousands. And the opportunity was there uh, to impact them with the gospel. And so the same for several Arab, Southeast Asian, uh, East African groups, uh, Indian groups. Uh, so over time, uh, Global Gates was birthed out of that concept, of that realization. And so uh, missionaries began to get deployed uh, to New York, uh, is where we started then other cities as well. So we started spreading uh, to places like Baltimore, D.C., uh, San Francisco, Houston, uh, just all of, now we're in Canada, we're in Toronto, we have folks also stationed now overseas, uh, and we, we began to realize that it's not just New York, and even not just American cities, but people are on the move at this point in human history in ways they haven't been for, for, for decades or centuries, and so what we're seeing is that there could be uh, pockets of unreached people, entire groups that are less than 1% uh, Christian. And the place where they have historically called home has not been accessible to missionaries or been hard to get to, but now they're moving to cities. So it could be New York, it could be Baltimore, it could be Bangkok, uh, mm -hmm. it, could be, uh, it could be another city uh, throughout, it could be Paris, France, mm -hmm. or that, Immigrant groups are relocating, but they're relocating by the thousands, mm -hmm. and they're they're moving for work or various other reasons, education maybe, but they're maintaining ties back home to their home countries, and so our vision is to see the gospel spread through an immigrant community, maybe in a diaspora place in a city, mm -hmm. but then spread back to their ethnic uh, homeland. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and we've we've even seen that. I mean, we've seen 
uh, immigrants in New York uh, are, that were able to impact uh, a Fulani community in West Africa because the gospel began to spread in the community in New York. We've seen that happen in places like Bangladesh and other places as well where the gospel spread through an immigrant group and then migrated through the natural family business connections back to the home country. Wow. And so and that really drew us uh, to Global Gates, uh, seeing that. And uh, we visited New York in 2012 uh, to kind of see what was going on, really were impacted by the opportunity, and then moved there in 2013 uh, to, to be involved in that. And so the Global Gates, is, you know, that, that is the vision. We were in New York five years serving among West African groups. Uh, and after five years, we began, as, as we did research, to sort of look to see where are immigrant groups being, uh, where are they moving to? Uh, we did research on a few places. I mean, we looked at Charlotte, North Carolina for one of them, and we looked at a few other places. But uh, Cincinnati was a place where we had heard a lot about uh, West Africans and other immigrant groups moving here. So uh, we did some research, we did some ethnographic research here and decided that, that this was a place that uh, we wanted to settle into and call home. So uh, we've been here uh, now for, uh, it kind of runs together, but it's been two and a half, pushing three years uh, now. And uh, we've just been blown away by the, the, the strategic value of not just Cincinnati, but the Midwest as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of immigrant groups are coming here for work uh, mm -hmm. because of industry being here. And so uh, we see value in that. So we've been here now for a little while in Cincinnati and have settled in and uh, see a value to reach West Africans, but also other immigrant groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And that's really for maybe folks at Cool Springs that, that aren't familiar uh, really how we originally got connected with Brian and Kenzie and Global Gates for that matter is we had adopted uh, an unreached people group, the Mandinka people in West Africa, and uh, we were going to New York uh, ministering to them. We met Brian and Kenzie, and uh, of course they knew all about where they those folks were in New York and, and added us and and uh, ministering to, to them and meeting them and sharing the gospel with them. And then when Brian and Kenzie moved to to Cincinnati, we prayed about it and really felt led to follow them there and continue to work with them uh, because there are uh, many West Africans. I know we, I think we've sent two groups, uh, two mission teams there, and all of them have been amazed at how many West Africans there are there and even able to meet uh, some Mandinka people there. And uh, so it, it's amazing how God is working and moving. Uh, and um, uh, and has guided you guys, and even just in the short time you've been there, the, I think just a, an enormous amount that God has done uh, to reach uh, um, uh, West African immigrants with the gospel. But um, speaking speaking of West Africans, you know what? Um, you know, obviously COVID has kind of changed everything with every every area of everybody's life. Uh, but with, you know, talk about maybe what the life of a West African uh, might be like there in Cincinnati and how COVID has affected that, has, has affected them in their lives. Yeah, so, yeah, it has, has had impact, like you said, among, you know, every community, um, every, every uh, industry. Uh, so uh, Cincinnati being located where it is, um, is heavy for uh, shipping distribution industry. Uh, so uh, you have major uh, distribution facilities here because it's a cross section of, we're not too far, actually Cincinnati is just, uh, just really a few miles from the NAFTA trade route. So the, mass, the, the, the main trade route that goes from Canada, Mexico, passing through the United States goes through the Midwest. So with that, you have major shipping lanes. Of course, we're also on the Ohio River, a major shipping artery, as well as major airports. And so what, what you really have here is industries such as, well, Amazon, of course, is, is, is huge. And they're, they're here, DHL, FedEx, uh, multiple major industries are, are here uh, that are flying planes, that are doing shipping on, 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 on the interstate. And so that provides employment uh, to many immigrant groups. One of those is West African. Mm -hmm. 
And so as COVID-19 hit, uh, we, and most of us started buying more from home, right? We would order more online. We would, we would spend less time in the grocery store if we could. Or if, and so what that has resulted in is uh, an explosion for, uh, of, uh, of, of the shipping industry. Okay, so we, we, we've seen how the toilet paper crisis, right, hit and everybody's trying to buy toilet paper. Is that, is that your fault in Cincinnati? Was that your uh, fault? No. I hope not, but, you know, we were shipping out a lot, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah. You were helping with the problem. That's right. uh, apparently, yeah, we, we were really, the shipping was wide open here. Yeah. And so you have those, and so everyone's shopping online. A lot of these uh, immigrants uh, had work. I mean, I'm going to say that all of them had jobs because we know that unemployment did become an issue uh, for multiple regions of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also know that many of these uh, immigrants were frontline workers. Uh, so they retained their jobs uh, mm -hmm. and got very busy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course, uh, companies like Uber, DoorDash, you know, people ordering food that rather go stay at home, have the food, the restaurant send food to them. So that's another uh, place where immigrants from West Africa and others uh, found employment. Now, being on the front line, uh, COVID uh, does spread uh, easily uh, through frontline workers. So uh, that has become an issue. We've known um, some to get sick uh, here. Um, and then of course it had tremendous impacts on travel, uh, COVID-19. So that's another way that it affected uh, West African communities here is uh, they couldn't travel to see their families. I mean, countries were locked down. And unfortunately, uh, we even had uh, one uh, of our uh, regular uh, contacts uh, from Senegal uh, go to West Africa. He, um, he got sick um, and passed away. Uh, and his uh, wife and, and kids were, were here in the States. Um, and so he had a, I think his son was about eight years old. Um, and he got sick. They couldn't go see him. Uh, and so he, he didn't survive. Uh, and so th those things became tragic as yeah. families were separated because travel was just down. And the airline industry, of course, has taken a major hit. And so we've seen families not see each other as often. Mm -hmm. uh, now that's starting to improve as, as countries are travels, at least getting a little bit better, it seems like. But uh, that had a huge impact on communities. And so they were already frontline workers. So they were already going to be exposed to the virus. But then you had uh, travel being cut off and it put a lot of stress uh, on the community and of course even in our own ministry projects to them like English as a second language classes that we were doing of course had to abruptly end as well yeah. uh, due to the coronavirus so uh, multiple areas of their life was impacted and yeah. even more ways than it impacted my own personal life yeah 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 that's interesting and, and talk you, you hit on uh started hitting on that this a little bit but talk, talk a little bit about how um how your your ministry has changed because obviously all all of our jobs have changed and speaking of ministry all of our you know, ministry has changed so much as our culture has rapidly changed and as uh, as we've had to make adjustments what are some things that um that uh, ways that your ministry has changed, maybe some things that you haven't been able to do, you were doing, but how you had to pivot and kind of uh, be creative and, and, and how that's kind of kind of worked out uh, ministry-wise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, 2020 changed a lot. Um, we hope that many of these changes are temporary, I think just like most of our country does, uh, but uh, it's definitely not as temporary as we uh, probably originally thought it would be in, in March and April of last year. Yeah. Uh, but one of the rather abrupt and, and, and changes that we had to deal with was we, we had an ongoing English as a second language class among West Africans. Most of these were Fulani speakers mm -hmm. from Senegal. Uh, there were a few other tribes like Wolof, Soninke that also were there. And that was uh, in, the, in the, the city of Lachlan, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, where there's a lot of uh, African immigrants. But that that really abruptly uh ended very quickly so that was we were doing that as the pandemic was really ramping up and you know there was starting to be sort of a scare and governments were starting to take action and so that ended very abruptly uh and in, in, in a way that we couldn't plan i mean we couldn't plan on the end it was just we were just told it was over yeah. <laughs> and it was it was done and so 
uh, that was really frustrating because we had planned multiple weeks out to the future with this class. Um, we were doing a lot. I mean, we had, we were holding Thanksgiving dinner with some of these students previously. I mean, we were, uh, we were doing a lot and had, and really had a huge opportunities to share the gospel and uh, students were taking gospel resources in their language as well as French and English. And it was really opening up doors. But yeah, that ended really quickly, uh, really abruptly, with little notice. Um, but there's, it was one of those situations where we were really powerless to do anything about it. Uh, so we began to look at other options uh, to continue to stay engaged. Uh, we did engage on social media, uh, using social media, Facebook and things to, uh, to reach out, to send out gospel resources focused on these groups in Cincinnati. Uh, we had a little bit of contact there uh, some engagement, uh, immigrants asking for prayer, uh, these things were going on. Uh, it, it made, one of the other challenges is, is we like to spend time in the community. And that's a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of, one of my personal values is I'm always trying to remind myself to think of how can I reorient my life mm -hmm. toward the unreached. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, what, what I have to do is and I think it's a good a move to make for anyone is to how can we make sure that our life patterns and routines are crossing the paths of unreached peoples. Yeah. So one of the simple ways is, is, you know, go eat at the restaurants. Where do they hang out? Where are the parks they go to? Uh, but even then, our restaurants were being shut down. Mm -hmm. Even now, one of my favorite Senegalese restaurant is not open uh, for dining in. It's very disappointing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's it really is and so a lot of things had to change so we did we did an online uh social media outreach for initially we still are doing some of that uh but then what we also seen is uh and it's hard to see in the beginning right that god is doing something sometimes it looks like god isn't doing anything yeah. <laughs> you're right uh, during the pandemic things are shutting down and we feel like oh god's not moving he just He's just looking down at it and he's just watching, but that's really not true. Uh, he was really working and doing things that it was hard for us to see at the time. So we, we had some ministry partners in Lachlan who through really divine providence was, were able to purchase two properties in Lachlan. And then through that, uh, that is going to open up many doors to impact because there's now properties purchased that are really close to where immigrants are living and how we can impact them. And uh, really that was great because previously we were having to find other locations uh, to meet in if we were gonna teach English and things like that. Uh, but as buildings were purchased, we realized that uh, they need, well, first of all, they need to be remodeled. So there was work, a lot of work, still work going on. But we were able to pour time, resources, and, and some financial resources as well uh, into helping these buildings get ready to be used. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I have to say this, if, if we were wide open in regular ministry throughout 2020, mm -hmm. it probably would have been more difficult for yeah. us to invest in these properties. Mm -hmm. uh, but because things were abruptly ended, mm -hmm. we had some time and resources that were unexpected to have on our hands. Mm -hmm. And we invested that into mm -hmm. these properties to be turned into ministry centers and outreach centers. Mm -hmm. And that's moving along. Uh, one of the buildings is now ready to be used. Um, remodeling is not done by any means. It's actually very far from being completed, but the building is usable. And that's a huge opportunity. So really what we're doing is we look back and say, God was had a plan through 2020. Mm -hmm. He was setting up 2021 in ways we couldn't see. Mm -hmm. So we did spend a lot of time doing some physical labor and remodeling on buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, that doesn't always come to mind when you think about missionary work, but yeah. It, it's a very useful way for us to use 2020. Yeah, that's good. And when you when you look in, into 2021, as you guys kind of seek the Lord about what that might look like, and of course, I don't know that anybody knows for sure, except the Lord, um, <laughs> what, that, what uh, twists and turns may occur in 2021. But uh, well, what are some things that, what, how do you, what do you kind of see, uh, envision 2021 looking like as far as ministry goes? Well, uh, we're, we're happy to say we already have some stuff on the calendar. Uh, so we have some stuff marked on the calendar that we're going to do. Uh, uh, one of those is coming up later this month. Uh, so what, what, we've, 
we're constantly reminded. So uh, Global Gates Executive Director, uh, David Garrison, uh, he has a statement that he has told us many times. And it's good to hear it over and over because it's for some reason it's hard to always remember to kind of process things. I have to hear it over and over again. But one of the things he often says is you have to go slow first so that you can go faster and farther later. Uh, and that the ministry is is definitely not a sprint. And it's not something, especially when it comes to reaching the unreached. I mean, we're talking about ethnic groups that have been uh, outside of God's kingdom uh, for centuries. And uh, this is not going to change overnight. And, and so it's not a sprint. And what we've been able to do is looking at restarting things in, in 2020. Now that the doors are opening up for us to really start like English as a second language classes again, things like that. We felt the need to lay a better groundwork uh, for mobilizing volunteers in Cincinnati. And so starting on February 21st, actually, uh, and for four Sunday evenings in a row, we're going to be holding a missions education mobilization course mm -hmm. uh, for four weeks, uh, for four, four Sundays in a row. Mm -hmm. And it is going to focus on laying the groundwork, so teaching what does the Great Commission look like in light of the entire Bible, mm -hmm. even starting from Abraham, when mm -hmm. God said he's going to bless the nations through Abraham. Mm -hmm. How does... How does the life of Abraham and God's promise to Abraham lay the foundation for the Great Commission? And so we're going to start from Abraham. We're going to work our way in this course uh, through the Great Commission, through the history of missions. And then toward the end of the course, we're going to be talking about the strategy of missions. How do we reach unreached peoples and what are the strategies? What are uh, cross-cultural uh, uh, conflicts to avoid and as well as uh, ways to effectively cross into another person's culture? So this is going to be four weeks, uh, starting on February 21st this month, uh, and that's going to be kind of our launch pad uh, that we're going to use to mobilize uh, some of our volunteers that will later teach English among Fulani and other West Africans will be in this course as well. And so we're laying up, we're, we're going to take some time and we're going to lay a groundwork so that we can really have a launch pad to launch forward mm -hmm. and to mobilize. Mm -hmm. uh, shortly after this missions courses over, uh, English will be restarting as well. Uh, ESL class will be restarting in Lachlan, Ohio as well. Uh, don't have the exact date for that, but that is starting shortly after the missions course ends. Uh, so we're pressing ahead. Um, so we have those, uh, those two uh, events moving forward, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, doing additional research, probably continuing to do some social media work as well. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward because English is a huge need uh, for immigrants who are coming here. So by plugging into that and mobilizing volunteers, uh, we, we hope to see more people engaged uh, with immigrants. We have seen that Cincinnati is a valuable place to mobilize. And I mean, it's, it's got, I mean, the Christian percentage here is not nearly as high as it was in my hometown of South Carolina. But there's still, but God still has a lot of people here who want to see his, his name be made famous among those who haven't heard. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is mobilize those folks. Um, and we have people from different walks of life, different ages mm -hmm. uh, that are just, they're literally, literally just asking, well, what can I do yeah. to impact unreached peoples in Cincinnati? Okay. And so we're moving ahead with a heavy focus on mobilization as we do this training course and then English is coming up. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, tell us, uh, just kind of in closing here, um, share with us uh, just a, a couple of specific ways that we as a, a body can be praying uh, for uh, for your family, but also for the ministry. And, and folks, as you uh, that are watching, as you listen to these, uh, you know, let uh, uh, comment below. Let us let, let Brian and Kenzie know that you're, you're committing to pray for them and for their ministry this year. And um, uh, also, um, you know, as, as he shares these, write them down, write them in your Bible somewhere so you can pray over these during your your times with the Lord, but share with us, Brian, a couple of prayer needs that you have, and then we'll pray for you. 
Well, well one is that God continues to raise up uh, individuals to be a part of the ministry here. Uh, we, we moved here knowing that there was not this big team here waiting on us. Uh, so when we moved to New York City so many years ago, there was a, a, an existing team and structure uh, that we could plug into. Here we've had to build it from the ground up. I mean, it's largely building from scratch. Uh, but what's been incredible is, is that while we thought maybe we're coming here alone or we're coming to, to build from scratch, in reality, God was already working long before we got here and he has people in their strategic places that he's waiting for a strategic time to utilize. And so we have seen mobilization, but we want to see more. Uh, and, and, and in terms of that, the Cincinnati metro area, which includes much larger than just Cincinnati, but also includes parts of Northern Kentucky, a uh, little bit of Indiana. And, and then of course you've got Columbus just north of us with a large immigrant population. There's more than just West Africans here. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, many people from Arabic speaking countries just north of Cincinnati uh, in one community also to uh, the north of Cincinnati is full of uh, immigrants from Nepal and India. Wow. In fact, we have one zip code that has a significant portion of that zip code that speaks the Gujarati language mm -hmm. from India. Uh, and so the opportunities are here. Uh, a lot of Somali immigrants as well from East Africa. Mm -hmm. And so we see communities that there is honestly little work going on locally, but there are some. And so what we're looking to do, and we, and we want prayer for this, is we want to form, a, we're trying to form more of a network mm -hmm. here uh, in Cincinnati of people who have a passion, who are trying to work together. Uh, but there are a lot of times, it, we don't always network. Christians, sometimes we don't always yeah. network very well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm guilty of that, uh, yeah. of course, as well. Yeah. Uh, but we're tr but I, I would love to see a stronger network of Christians in Cincinnati who are crossing uh, cultures to impact unreached and to see us network to encourage one another. Because if, we, if we're honest, ministry among unreached peoples uh, can be very challenging and discouraging. Uh, because, I mean, you're really trying to access hard to reach people. So networking for encouragement purposes alone would be incredibly valuable. Uh, so we're trying to build that network and immobilize more. So big prayer uh, is increased mobilization and networking, which is moving along. But we, we really would like to see more here. Uh, so that's one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and really just praying for the city of Lockland, or, or is, as it's called, the village of Lockland. Uh, mm -hmm. That is where a lot of West Africans live. But that that area, God is God is doing some stuff there mm -hmm. uh, with the, the recent purchase of properties and uh, the, the the folks that are interested in impacting that community. Really, fit, really starting to see that, that God has is wanting to do something mm -hmm. in Lockland, Ohio. Wow. And uh, just want to continue to pray for that yeah. as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, for our family, mm -hmm. uh, continue prayer for health. I mean, honestly, uh, we have been very healthy, and that is that is a blessing. Uh, but continue prayer for that uh, that that God continues to keep us healthy. I mean, I've been blessed with a very resilient family. Uh, we've moved from. Uh, the small town of Cowpen, South Carolina, to New York City to live in the Bronx for years, mm -hmm. and now in Cincinnati. And honestly, you know, it, I owe a lot of that to the resiliency of my wife yeah. to be uh, willing and strong enough to uproot yeah. uh, and s s more than once yeah. and move to cities that uh, were foreign to us. Yeah. And uh, so really prayer that God continues to sustain our family, but yeah. honestly, God is blessed. I'm, I'm blessed to have a family who, who is strong enough yeah. uh, to follow God's plan in multiple yeah. places. Yeah, praise God. Well, thank you for sharing those prayer needs. And so um, uh, folks that are watching, if, if you would just, just bow with, uh, with us for just a moment, and if you would just, just take a few minutes and pray over these uh, needs that Brian has mentioned, and then I, I want to just voice a prayer for us, and then we'll, we'll close.
God, uh, we, we're so thankful to be able to be uh, with Brian for a few minutes, even though uh, he's far from us and uh, over, over the internet, but we thank you for the technology to be able to do that. And Lord, just to hear his heart for the nations today and for West African immigrants and for the city that you've placed him in. And we just thank you for, for he and Kenzie and their, their family, their heart. Uh, to go and plant their lives there and to reach the unreached. And Lord, I pray that you would um, would uh, spur our hearts to, to do the same. Lord, that you would turn our hearts and, and our minds toward the unreached. Uh, Lord, even in our own communities, and uh, but also to those cities and communities around the world that have not heard <clears throat> the, the good news of you. And so, Lord, we, we come to you today just thanking you for, for Brian and his family and, uh, Lord, for the, the strength and resiliency that you've given uh, to them as they have uprooted their lives many times and, and obeyed you. And we just pray you would continue to strengthen them, continue to give them good help, continue to uh, give them wisdom and understanding to know how to, how to care for one another and their family and Brian, how to lead their family uh, but also, Lord, how to how to obey you and their, their ministry as well, that you would give them <clears throat> wisdom in that. And Lord, we also pray, Lord, for uh, churches and, and uh, folks there that are believers in Cincinnati, that you would raise them up, mobilize them, uh, Lord, to uh, have a heart for the unreached that are all around them. And Lord, as Brian uh, attempts to mobilize them and train them and disciple them, I pray that you would just put those pieces together as you're already doing and that you would continue to do that as they network with, with churches and Christians, Lord, that would have a heart uh, for the nations. And Lord, I, I pray that you would raise up people uh, to go, maybe from, uh, Lord, from other parts of the U.S., even from maybe from our own church that you would raise up uh, to, to go and plant their lives in, uh, in, a, in Cincinnati and reach the unreached there. And, and Lord, even for churches like us that might uh, feel led to give or might feel led to go uh, short term, Lord, that you would raise up churches like that that would partner with Brian and Kinsey and, and with Global Gates to reach uh, Lord, the unreached there in, in Cincinnati. And Lord, we, we thank you for uh, the opportunity, Lord, to, to, to know them and to be a part of their ministry. And we pray specifically for what you're doing in Lachlan. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for, <clears throat> Lord, just how uh, you've worked and moved a great deal in a short amount of time with, with the purchase of property and, and ESL classes and ministry that's going on and relationships that are being built and the gospel is being shared. God, we praise you for that and pray that you would continue to do a great work and transform lives and transform that community for your glory. And Lord, we thank you in, in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Brian, thanks so much for joining us uh, tonight. Please tell your family he hello and uh, how much we uh, think of them and that we're praying for them and we're here for you guys. And, and I know uh, Cool Springs folks continue to pray for Brian and Kinsey and I was talking to Brian a little bit before we um, began today, uh, and I know uh, he and we at Cool Springs are praying about maybe uh, the possibility of a short-term trip to Cincinnati, maybe sometime in the fall if, if the Lord allows. Uh, so maybe hearing what Brian says today is going to prick your heart, and I know we've got uh, maybe 15 or 20 folks that are in our church that have been to uh, to Cincinnati before that know Brian and Kinsey and, and maybe you want to be a part of, of, uh, uh, of a group that might go in the fall to, uh, to work in various ways with West African immigrants uh, there in Cincinnati. So, so pray about that, think about that, and we're going to stay in touch with Brian and see how the Lord leads uh, with that. But, but thank you so much for joining us tonight. Brian, thank you for being with us and for your time. Uh, God bless you, and we'll see you later. Thank you.